Welcome back to the Toppy Blues, your source for all things Everton. My name is Connor Williams and we're back with another video. This time it is on the potential sale of Everton Football Club. That's right, the news broke last night about Farhad Mishiri um, potentially selling the club. I've got all the low down there. I even got a tweet summing up the main potential buyers. It's not done and dusted. News broke last night, but more news has come out today via Alan Myers. Um, but just to look at the the potential buyers, see what they're like. They do have a couple of fingers in a couple of pies in terms of football. They do own a couple of football clubs. We'll discuss all of that in a little minute. But yeah, first things first. Um, it broke last night via Mike Keegan of the Daily Mail. Um, it broke that Everton are close to being sold in a deal worth around six hundred million pounds with 777 partners being the preferred bidder. A deal is expected to be concluded by the start of next week. Uh, Mike Keegan then went on to say, sources insist 777 partners are demanding Premier League guarantee in order to conclude their sale. Everton want the deal done at high speed. And finally, he says, MSP Sports Capital remained in the chase last night and appear undeterred uh, to be clear, second favourites. Other possible candidates are circling, but running out of time. So um, we'll get into a little bit more of that. Uh, like I said, Alan Myers has said some stuff today. We'll break down this bit first. Clear that Mishiri's selling. Um, it's been clear for a while. He's been hinting for a while. But then when the press get a whiff of it and they publish it, he then comes out and goes, no, I'm, 100 I'm sure in January he said he's 100% committed to the club even though these rumours circulated then. He's lied, I think, in all honesty, because the club is up for sale. He is looking to sell it. Um, so I think he's lied to, to us there a little bit. Um, but yeah, so it looks like he's going. That's an almost definite guarantee that he's looking to sell. Um, 777, obviously one in Premier League status. That doesn't surprise me. I was actually more surprised that this was breaking now that somebody's interested in us before we get Premier League secure. It was securely in the Premier League next season. Um, just because, and, and I say this and people will, will and I'll, I'll get to your, your, your sort of complaints with what I'm going to say. We're one, we're not the biggest club on the market at the minute. You've got Liverpool looking to be sold, Manchester United looking to be sold. They're the two big ones in English football that are for sale at the minute. Secondly, I don't know, if we're that attractive of an offer, obviously we've got the stadium and the stadium's massive. The stadium's a big deal when it's built. It's not built yet. Whoever buys the club might have to produce some of the funding to build that. That will go in the sale value. Um, but it's not built yet. So the whole, ah, yeah, but we've got a new stadium. We haven't yet. So you can't really count that. And if we were in the championship, it's just a headache that even Mashiri clearly doesn't want to be involved in, hence why he's looking to sell. Um, I think he's just, you know, counting his losses at this point. So I didn't think we were the most attractive offer without it. Obviously, 777 have now said, no, we want you in the Premier League for this to go ahead. MSP aren't fussed either way, but I will get on to them in a minute because it turns out they're not fully behind buying us properly. Um I'll get into that, then I'll get into 777 and all that drama with them. But yeah, um, it looks like Majiri's reign could be coming to an end very, very soon. Uh, very interesting, isn't it? Uh, obviously, don't know what 777 are going to do. I don't know if they're going to swoop the board out or what have you, but um, it's all very interesting. Uh, but yeah, all in all, it, it looks like Mashiri might be going. I'm sure we'll do a video on Mashiri go and his Everton reign at some point. For me, been a bit lackluster. I've seen some people say his heart was in the right place, but he meddled too much. Th that type of sympathy is the same stuff Frank Lampard's getting now. Of, oh, his heart was in the right place. He nearly relegated us. Mashiri, his heart might have been in the right place, according to some of you, but he nearly relegated us. And the club is involved with some... like When you look at Mashiri's reign, it is concluded with wasting money, dark, dark links with, with strange people, um aka the Usmanov links and all of that. Nobody knows if that's true or not. Um, but they don't go away and they pop up every year. Um and, and the meddling, the meddling as well. So really strange, but I'm sure we'll do a full video on Mashiri and his um legacy at Everton Football Club. Um 
Moving on from that, though, Alan Myers said today that Farhad Najiri remains in talks with a number of companies looking to invest in Everton. 777 Partners and MSP are most advanced groups discussing the proposals. MSP are more likely are a more likely option currently. So Alan Myers has gone against Mike Keegan, saying MSP are probably the more realistic ones. Uh, 777 wish to buy the majority stake in Everton, which would see Mashiri out. While MSP want to put a small percentage in, no decision has been made yet and it's not expected to come until after the season, possibly mid-June. So Alan Myers has just put Mike Keegan to bed. I don't know who's right and who's wrong there. Um, But yeah, he's just said it's not happening by the end of next week. It will happen after the end of the season, which makes more sense. Um, Bearing in mind that 777 want us to be known if we've got Premier League status. And furthermore... It looks like Mashiri prefers MSP because he will still be majority shareholder of Everton Football Club. They'll just put in a little bit of money. Whereas 777 have come out and said, if we're buying you, we want to buy all of your majority stake. Um, so yeah, really interesting to see where that one goes. Um, on to 777, um, because it looks like if anyone's going to buy us outright. Um, there are questions around them, obviously. Um, sort of like where's the money coming from? Um, you know, Everton, they are involved in other football clubs, but Everton um, are a big, big club, one of the bigger ones they've been involved with. Um, but that one's not as major as some of the others. I've seen people putting up stuff and I've got a perfect um, sort of context for it all here. So 777 partner clubs impacts. Um, so they've owned her for Berlin for about two months. I know people were saying her for a relegated and stuff like that. Her for have been like they've been owning her for Berlin for about two months. So I don't think you can fully blame seven 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 for the downfall of her for Berlin. That would be quite a harsh one to do. Um so yeah, a little bit a little bit tough there with that one. Um if if they'd owned them from the start, maybe. Um, but they look like they're finishing rock bottom of the of the of the Bundesliga. But again, not really their fault. Um, Seville, who have got their lowest league points in total, um, apparently seven 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 have zero control over Seville. So again, they've let people deal with it instead. Um, actual people, and they're the ones letting them down. So there's another one debunked. Uh, the other one was Genoa, who got relegated. Um, again, 777 bought Genoa in the summer window, invested in January, and they're coming back up this year. So Genoa were relegated, but with 777 buying them in the summer, investing in the January, they're now heading back up to the Syria. So that's another one that's worth looking at. Standard Liège, I saw someone say that they haven't won a trophy since 777 took over. Um, they have improved significantly and they have had minimal investments. It is worth pointing that out. Vasco promoted to the Syria, made some investments this winter. Seven seven and seven are included in them. So as you can see, they are involved with about five, six football clubs there. And, and if you don't look at it with context, they look bad. But when you add the context of they've only owned at Bertha for um her for, for two months, Vasco are getting promoted this year with a winter investment. The age they've had minimal investment and are improving. Seville, zero control. Genoa bought this summer, invested, and they're coming back up. I'm not saying 777 are the answers um, at all. I'm not saying, yep, they're, they're everything Everton's missing. All I'm saying is a little bit of context goes a long, long way. If you're going to tweet out stuff like they're rubbish because this is what their league table showed, you've got to do a bit more than that. Not everything is as clear on the surface. Um so, yeah, I think context is is key here. Um, and just remember, not everything's as it seems on the surface um, with, every, with every bit of life. So, yeah, uh, be interested in what happens. I think if they bought us, uh, I don't know if they do, because Seville is their next biggest football, is their biggest football club they own, I think, there um, with European Cups. Um, I don't know if they would do what they've done with Seville and have zero control which worries me then because they need to fill a board with people who know what they're doing. Is this going to be where the boards stay on and run the club and they fund it? 
which I know no fan would like a lot of fans won't be happy with almost like Vince McMahon. And if anyone's a wrestling fan, Vince McMahon with the WWE and Endeavor, they all thought he was going Endeavor UFC have bought them. He's not going anywhere. It'd be shades of that. Um, yeah. But I like, ultimately, I think hopefully they make the changes needed. I am a little bit worried that that is that the board will stay because they've sold them to people who want to keep them in MSP. I think that one's the best one for the board and Mishiri. They keep their power, they keep their control, but they get the money they're desperately after. Um, it's interesting that all the money's sort of problems have come after sanctions. Uh, again, don't don't a hundred percent know, can't a hundred percent say, and I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it's coincidental that since sanctions came about to um Russian natives and oligarchs in the UK, Everton's football woes, uh, money woes have appeared. Um, so maybe that's what they're looking for, the investment to replace that again. I'm not saying that's hundred percent what it is, you know, I don't want to be liable for anything, but there is a, you know, is a coincidence at best. Um, but yeah, ultimately, guys, I don't think this is over. I think there's another turn in the tail. Right now, I think I'd prefer the 777 buyout. Uh I, I want Mashiri and Co. uh away from the football club. I think whether Hart was in the right place or not, it's not gone well. I can't see it going well. We've had one near scare last season. Hopefully another near scare, potentially a fatal scare um, here with relegation again. The signs are, you know, you're down there once, maybe you're just a fluke. Uh, you're down there twice, patterns are emerging. You're down there the third time. I don't think you get out, especially with the uh, clubs wanting point deductions to us as well. We can't afford to be there again next season. Um, so, yeah, that's what I'd prefer, but uh, we'll wait and see what happens. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, and comment down below your thoughts on 777 MSP, which would you prefer um, buying us out? There are other investors as well, so somebody could make a late bid. But like I said, when you've got, uh, people are after Qatari, uh, Middle Eastern money, Abu Dhabi, Saudi money, um, because of obviously Newcastle, and you've got Man City with Middle Eastern owners with a lot of money. That is where money comes. Other than America, I think they're the next big richest. Um, sorry, they are the richest. Then it's America. Um, I don't think we're as attractive to them because you've got two absolute giants in English football, as much as it's going to upset people, which is Manchester United and Liverpool Football Club, trophy cabinets adorned, fans all over the world. Manchester United are one of the biggest commercial clubs in the world. They are very, very attractive business offers if you've got an empty, but you know, if you've got a bottomless pit of money. I think realistically, we might have to settle for somebody who's not got a bottomless bank of money. Um, which, by the way, money's not everything. You need brains. Farhad Majiri, for all you can knock him, he has put money in. It's just not been in the right place. So, yeah. But like I said, let me know your thoughts down below. I'll see you guys very soon.